Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to address this distinguished gathering at a time when the world has faced one of the deepest shocks to our way of life. Under normal conditions, we would have all have been here in Addis Ababa, but COVID-19 has dictated the current mode of conference. Though we miss you in Ethiopia, we're grateful to have found a way of continuing to deliberate on how to develop Africa better in a sustainable way. This conference is timely in bringing together leading thinkers and practitioners in the continent to examine the impact of COVID-19, the responses to it, and how we can collectively rebuild and refocus our efforts to move our continent back to the path of sustainable development and achieve our our aspirations of the Africa we want. In Africa, according to some estimates, economic growth is forecast to show significant contraction in 2020. The poverty numbers continue to be revised upward depending upon the intensity and duration of the pandemic. For instance, the pandemic has exacerbated the welfare conditions of a large proportion of informal workers who constitute approximately 80% of the total workforce. Many Africans do not have access to social protection and face substantial gender inequalities when it comes to access to education and health, which has been exacerbated by the pandemic. Let me illustrate this perspective with some stark figures. Africa had the world's highest adolescent fertility rate at 99 births per 1,000 women, as well as the world's lowest female secondary school enrollment. In Africa, adolescent girls and young women represented a quarter of all new cases of HIV in 2019, equivalent to 4,500 of them acquiring HIV every week. Moreover, adolescent girls and young women are more than twice as likely to acquire HIV as their male peers. Alarmingly, nearly 34 million girls equivalent to 38% of girls between ages of 12 to 14, and 61% of girls ages of 15 to 17 are not in secondary school. Almost half of the estimated 24 million learners around the world at risk of not returning to school are girls and young women. 24% of young women 14 to 24 years old, are not in employment, education or training. For young women who work, the conditions, pay and income security their jobs offer are poor. Faced with limited family resources, girls are more likely than boys to be withdrawn from school, thus widening the literacy gender gap. Plan International and UNESCO have warned of potential for increased dropout rates, which will disproportionately affect adolescent girls, further entrenching gender gaps in education, and lead to increased risk of sexual exploitation, early pregnancy, and early and forced marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, these gender gaps are systemic and have persisted for years, but as the pandemic redirects resources to COVID-19 related solutions, including vaccines, attention to addressing existing inequalities will diminish, as will resources for non-COVID diseases such as HIV, malaria, and TB. Against this background, let me propose some solutions on context and gender to complement our deliberations on how we can rebuild better from COVID-19. The Africa strategic response to COVID, the leveraging of the continental free trade area as a business opportunity, the pooled procurement of COVID health products as exemplified by the African medical supply platform, the significant uptake at the continental level of a digital future and its positive spillovers on employment and human capital just to name a few. To combat COVID-19, Ethiopia leveraged on health extension program, which 
which is one of the most innovative community-based health schemes. It is founded on idea that access to and the quality of primary health care in rural communities can be improved substantially through the transfer of health knowledge and skills to households through the training and empowerment of community-based health workers and volunteers. This program has transformed the approach to disease prevention, family and maternal health, vaccinations and hygiene. It has enabled Ethiopia to expand primary health care coverage to the entire country and has vastly improved health outcomes. Hence, innovative thinking can offer local solutions to systemic challenges. Additionally, we in Africa have a unique tradition of solidarity and mutual support in times of difficulty. We have a culture of sharing whatever we may have as a community. This is a great value that should not be overlooked in our suggested solutions. For instance, here in Ethiopia, during the peak of the COVID pandemic, we have mobilized the community around the motto called Gebeta Magarat, roughly translated as sharing your food. This movement has shown amazing mutual community support to poorer members of the community. Therefore, we need to tap into our time-honored pan-African values in addition to solutions based on conventional analysis. Africa's responses and plans for building back better for this COVID-19 pandemic towards a sustainable development trajectory need to have gender considerations at their core. It is with pleasure that I note that within this African Economic Conference, space has been provided for showcasing African women thought leadership and recognizing women's role as policy designers and proponents rather than simple beneficiaries. Engaging women in building back better from COVID-19 will require dedicated and increased fiscal resource allocation to smart investments in health, education and consequently their contribution to development. For example, the costs of high rates of adolescent childbearing range from 1 to 30 percent of annual GDP across African and other low- and middle-income countries. These estimates represent a young mother's foregone income during the course of their life. The lack of educational and economic opportunities that result in women's diminished labor force participation is estimated to cost Africa 60 billion US dollars in economic losses every year. On the other hand, Africa could gain a lot more per year through multi-sectoral investments in adolescents and youth, especially girls, by capitalizing on demographic windows of opportunity. I have no doubt that the dozens of research papers you will discuss present additional perspectives for building back better from COVID-19 to ensure genuine inclusion of all segments of society for resilience and sustainable development of our Mother Africa. I wish you fruitful deliberation.